Hey guys, in this video we will learn the basics of RTX or real-time ray tracing in Unity's high definition render pipeline. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by ByteProof. ByteProof is the free all-in-one platform for your mobile games. Their easy-to-use dashboards give you everything you need to start growing your game into a business. With real-time analytics, monetization tracking, player progression, remote configs, A-B testing, and advertising attribution in only one easy-to-integrate SDK. Using ByteBrew is quick and easy. Sign up is 100% free. Add your game to your dashboard. Import their SDK into Unity. Add your game keys and initialize the SDK in your game. And boom, in less than 5 minutes, you can save thousands of dollars a month using ByteBrew 100% free. With their dashboard, it's super easy to check players' engagement and their progression. So, go sign up for ByteBrew using the link in the description or visit ByteBrew.io. To set up a STRP project, first open up the Unity Hub, then click on New Project. Then from here, choose the latest Unity version available. Then select the STRP template. And if it is not downloaded, click on Download Template. Then set up a name for your project. Choose a path to save your project and then simply click on create project. For the first time, it will take a couple of minutes to load the package. Alright, now the package is loaded, but there are a few problems. To fix these issues, go to the strp plus dxr tab and simply click on this fix buttons. Alright, now everything is fixed. As you can see, all the options are green. For this video, I'm using this library 3D scene, which you can download for free from cgtrader.com. A link is given in the description. Alright, I have imported that asset and also prepared a few basic materials. So let's quickly drag and drop this into the scene and also assign the materials. Before adding any lights to the scene, I want to explain the ray tracing a bit that I'm going to cover in this video. Basically, there are four major things that are included in RTX rendering. First, ray trace GI or ray trace global illumination, ray trace ambient occlusion, ray trace reflection, and ray trace shadows. When all these features are combined, we get a almost physically accurate real time lighting without any light baking. For RTX rendering, you have to have a RTX supported graphics card. A list of supported graphics card can be found on Unity documentation. Now first of all, in our project, we need to enable all the four features that I just mentioned. So for that, I go to edit, project setting, and in the graphics section, select your SDRP asset. And here as you can see, the ray tracing is enabled. Next is this screen space ambient occlusion. Don't get confused with the name. In Unity, both screen space and RTX feature are combined together. So I enable both screen space, ambient occlusion, global illumination, reflection, and also the shadows. Next, again go to project setting. And in the SDRP global setting, and down here in the frame setting default values go to the lighting section and we also need to enable these features here which is screen space reflection shadows global illumination and ambient occlusion okay now we are ready to use these features in our project next i'm going to add a sky and fog volume to control the environment for that right click Go to volume and choose sky and fog volume. And first of all, disable the sky. The reason I'm not using any sky because I want to show you the effect of using just one direction light. Let's also disable the fog. Next, select this sky and fog profile. 
and go to the lighting panel by the way you can access this lighting panel by going windows rendering and lighting and then assign this profile in this profile section next i'm going to add a post process volume to control the exposure of this scene so for that i right click again go to volume and choose a global volume i call this post process and click on new to create a new profile and in the add override section choose exposure click all to enable all the option and from this little mole icon choose sunlit scene okay next select the direction light and adjust its position and uh, i don't want this filter color so i reset it to white and also set the shadows to high resolution okay so now as you can see that in our scene there is only one light source which is this direction light and we will use the real-time ray tracing to lit this entire scene now the first effect i'm going to add is ray trace gi for that select the post process volume and click on add override go to lighting and choose screen space and global illumination click all to enable all the option and also enable this feature and as you can see that our scene is little bit lit but looking a bit dirty and that is because this is not a ray trace gi this is screen space gi this gi method only works on the lighting information that is visible in the frame for example if i move my camera this side you can see everything goes dark because now there is no lighting information in this frame but if i again move my camera this side you can see our scene gets lit it is now basically using this lighting information to generate gi in this area you can also use this effect in your project but this is not as good as ray trace gi so to use ray trace gi go into the tracing section and here choose ray tracing and you can instantly see a huge improvement now this gi is not relying on the screen information you can see even if i move my camera this side our scene is still lit okay because now this gi is calculated using ray tracing so now let's take a look at some of its feature most of the features are pretty much self-explanatory in the mode you can choose performance or quality mode for games you can use performance mode and for architecture visualization i would recommend quality mode as you can see our scene is still a bit dark and that is because we are only using one bounce count so if i increase this bounce counts to two or maybe three and now our scene is properly lit and this gi is generated using just one direction light and you can also see that it's quite fast to fine tune this gi you can use this denoiser radius so if i zoom here and if i reduce this radius you can see we get better detail and if i increase the radius you can see we get a cleaner result so you need to find a sweet spot between these settings i think 0.5 is fine for the extra contact details we're going to use our next feature which is ray trace ambient occlusion to add ray trace ambient occlusion again click on add override button go to lighting and choose ambient occlusion click all to enable all the option and increase the intensity and this is the basic ambient occlusion that we use in most of our project let's also change the quality to high this ambient occlusion also provides good result but it is not physically accurate it's also based on a screen space so for the actual ray trace ambient occlusion just enable this option and as you can see our scene instantly gets dark and that is because this ray trace gi is very powerful so first uh, you can either reduce the intensity or you can reduce the maximum ray length so i set this to 5 and also reduce the intensity to 0.75 
and here you can see it's providing a physically accurate contact details underneath these shells the next effect i'm going to add is ray trace reflection so again click on add override go to lighting and choose screen space reflection and click all to enable all the option and reduce the smoothness something like that and you can see that now our scene is receiving reflections but again this is not a rtx reflection these are screen based reflection so if i move my camera down you can see the reflection goes away because now the object is not visible in the frame and if i move up the reflections are visible again in the algorithm you can also use this pbr accumulation method which is much more accurate but still it's based on screen space okay to use ray trace reflection again in the tracing option choose ray tracing and these are the physically accurate real time reflection now if i move my camera down you can see the reflection are still visible even though the object is not visible in the scene and this looks way much better than other reflections And finally, the last effect is ray trace shadows. So if I move my camera here, you can see these shadows here. So if I select my direction light, then enable the screen space shadows and also enable the ray trace shadows. You can see how smooth and sharp these shadows are. The good thing about this shadow is that if I use this angular diameter option, which will basically gradually blur the shadows so if i increase this option you can see how softly these shadows get blur as it goes further away from this point and that's the beauty of this retrace shadows it provides physically accurate shadows just like real world i think 5 is fine and if i disable this option you can see it's not looking accurate So you can see a huge difference in ray trace and normal shadows. Now to finalize the lighting, I'm going to add a few more effects. First, I select the camera and in the anti-aliasing section, choose temporal anti-aliasing to soften these edges. Then go to post effect and add an indirect lighting controller. and set the entire lighting to 2 to kind of brighten up this scene and you can also see that scene is too yellow so I'm gonna add a white balance and set the temperature to a negative value and also add a lift comma gain to adjust the color And here's the final result and as you can see it is still quite fast but if I try to maximize this window you can see it gets slower because this ray trace rendering is also resolution dependent and that's why we use features like DLSS or FSR to kind of speed up this rendering and now if I turn off this direction light you can see the whole scene gets dark this whole lighting information is generated from this one direction light. Finally, the one last thing I want to show is the path tracing. So if I go to the post process volume and search for path tracing. And as you can see, it is immediately start rendering. This is basically the same technique that is used in most 3D software like Blender, Max and Maya. But as you can see, it is not real time. It takes a few seconds to render just one frame. And this technique also combines all the four features that I just mentioned. So if you want to render something in Unity, you can also use this feature. 
If you want more tutorials about lighting and rendering in Unity, then please give a visit to my Patreon page, link is given in the description. And finally, huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, especially Anna Sinconan, Dimidu, Carrie Loda Dio, Izok Mok, Alexander, Brendan Mannion, Florian Adrian, Francois Lobe Huden, Phoebe Lou, John Marx, Luis Elvis Hernandez, MMD Idol, Scott Foster, Silas Renegal, and The Masti. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.